With Pedro Pascal leading some of the best television out there at the moment, I decided to make a diorama inspired by one of his characters, the reluctant father figure who will be protecting his special adopted child as they go on their travels. The, the Mandalorian. Why not both? Now for my basing of this build, I'm going to be using the wooden back piece of one of these cheap frames that I got from my local Kmart for a couple of bucks. Once you build on these, they're great because the frame then serves as a perfect border for our end result. So to start off, we'll do a little sketch of what we want to build. The idea being a destroyed apocalyptic environment with a heap of zombies and our hero. For this build, I really want a cracked up looking road. And what I've noticed in the past when using cheap air dried clay is if I lay it out thin enough, it ends up warping and cracking, which will give me the exact effect that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna grab a couple of pieces, throw them down between some baking paper and lay them out nice and thin. Making sure to get enough that I can cover up most of the base. I wanna add a little bit of extra texture to this so it's not just flat. So I'll be using this low grit sandpaper to add a little bit of extra texture, helping to give us that bitumen look. Then I'll peel this away and leave it to dry on a flat surface. I didn't do a great job of peeling it off in one piece, but that's fine since it's going to all be broken up on our final result anyway. And we'll come back to this a few hours later and see that it's already starting to warp as it dries. As I start to push this flat, you'll already see that it's starting to crack into several pieces. And since this was the effect that I was going for, it's worked out perfectly. It's nice to be able to take the disadvantages of certain materials and turn them into a new technique. Now while that goes off to the side to dry, we'll pull out some foam board. I'm going to be using this to build a back wall to our diorama piece. Now that we have our back wall and our base, it's time to double check the size before cutting out another piece to work as a sidewalk. Now we have our basic shapes, but looking at this wall, it's a little bit bland. I want to add in a door and a garage door. So for the garage, we're going to cut out a piece of corrugated cardboard and then peel off one of the sides, leaving us with this nice rippled cardboard that will work perfectly as an industrial style garage door. So with a quick trim down and test fit, we make sure that it's about the right size before cutting out a hole for it to slide into on our backing. Then cutting out a few extra details with some thin cardboard to work as a border for the door and giving us a few extra details raised up on that back wall. Then cutting out a little bit more of that foam board to top out the garage door before cutting out a couple of small pieces to sit around the base of the borders as you often see in back docks so that trucks and cars don't take out the corners of the walls. Then we'll be taking this 3D printed door, pressing it in to gauge the size and cutting out a hole for it to stick in place. You could make these doors from scratch, but I decided to cheat the process a little bit and I found a nice 3D print that was free on Thingiverse. Once everything was cut down to size, it was time to start gluing everything together. So I started off by using a little bit of Mod Podge to glue down all of these cardboard detailings as super glue tends to melt this kind of foam, at least the cheap stuff that I bought. Then busting out the hot glue as this all dries a lot quicker. So I used this to stick the door in place and also used a bit of this to glue down the topper of the garage. Then going back to the Mod Podge to stick these last couple of details onto the edges of the garage door. And finally we hot glue that garage door in place before coating all of this with a thin layer of watered down Mod Podge. This is just to help seal everything up and help it stand a little bit more sturdy. I didn't coat the entire foam surface as once this bit's dry I'm going to go in and add a whole heap of aged damage to this concrete wall carving in cracks and little areas that have been broken away to help give it that aged, apocalyptic feel. Ultimately, this is a lot of fun because there are no wrong answers. You just hack away at the wall, leaving it with cracks and chunks missing. Now it's time to cut that sidewalk down to allow for a driveway into our garage, and then run the side of our blade along the outer areas of these sidewalks to help round off the sidewalk curve. Then doing a quick dry fit, I kind of realized that I put my door too low. 
so all of this had to sit on top of the sidewalk. So I cut out a small ramp to sit at the base of our garage to help keep everything at the right size before gluing all of our sidewalk pieces down and then hot gluing our back wall in place. I then decide to carve a few extra details into our sidewalk, adding bricks, even though most of this is going to be covered up in our end build. Now that all of our foam work was done, it was time to give the entire thing a coat in a watered down Mod Podge to seal it up for the later paint job. This step is super important when working with foam as I'm planning on spray painting this as a base and all of this foam would just melt away if it wasn't sealed up. Additionally, for such a thin backboard, this gives a nice extra bit of stability to our build. And now it's time to stick down our cracked up road. So I'm gonna pour a whole heap of Mod Podge over the base and then spread it around by keeping it nice and thick. Then starting to puzzle in all those thin pieces of dried clay that we prepared earlier. As I put these in place, I press them down flat, which adds even more cracks to the original broken up bits and pieces. This is the exact effect that I wanted for this road and has turned out perfectly. So we just keep going around and puzzling in all of these extra bits and pieces, pushing in some of these smaller parts into any of the larger gaps. I don't mind if these crack up even smaller and eventually I just start pinching together and cracking down more of this into a fine dust to fill in all of the gaps. We'll continue to puzzle in as many of these pieces as we can to fill in all the bits and pieces of leftover ground space and then filling in all of the gaps with a dust. 20 years into an apocalypse, a road wouldn't be in the best shape, so as much damage as you want to apply is more than acceptable. And now that it's in place, I'm going to give the whole thing a wash in that watered down Mod Podge as well. This should soak into the clay pretty well and just help stop these bits and pieces from falling apart as we continue further into the build. And once that's dry, we'll take it outside and spray the entire thing with a grey primer. Now it's painted up, it's looking good, but I decided to throw in a couple of extra details. So I made up a drain pipe using a skewer and a few little bits and pieces. Basing this in that same grey and then painting it silver. And before adding in the details, I decided to paint everything up. I started with a light grey over the road, then decided to come in with a much heavier black, mixing this up as I went, but really just giving it a nice rough deep paint. Once I was happy with the amount covered up, I went over this, dabbing at it with a sponge to help break apart any texture from the brush strokes. Then coming back in and sponging on a whole heap of different greys and blacks to add more and more variation to these roads. Also using the same sponge to add a few more bits of variation to our concrete walls along our back piece. And now it was time for the first coat of paint on our back wall details. I used a silver paint over the garage and security doors as well as the details around the edge. I will be painting over these later on with colours but I'll be doing this in a very rough patchy way to make it look like the paint has worn off the metal. So now it's time to add in some colour. We'll start off with a bright yellow on those bumpers around the edge of our garage and then coming in with a blue over top of the door. Intentionally doing a fairly rough paint job to make it look like this has worn away over the years. We'll then repeat this same process over the garage door, but with white. The rougher the paint job, the better. So using an old dried hobby paint, I really just got some basic bits and pieces on my brush and blotch this in all over the garage door. Now for a little bit more variation, I'm gonna paint the garage topper in a lighter black before coming in with a whole handful of different rust effects to start really adding some age and wear onto all of these metal bits and pieces. By using a few different types of rust paints, I'm really able to add a nice natural looking variation to my rust effects and I'm pretty happy with the way this turns out, giving this building a really old, worn, dilapidated look, as you'd come to expect from anything in an apocalyptic situation. 
I wanted to make the sidewalks look like they were made of a different kind of concrete than the walls, so I laid out some masking tape and splotched on a whole heap of a lighter grey with a sponge. This removed perfectly from the wall, but when I went to pull it up from the base, it did bring up a little bit of paint off the road. This was fine, I could just cover it up with another layer of black and mix in some greys, as the road had to look nice and naturally random anyway, and ultimately this was probably going to be hidden by some overgrowth. Now this was starting to look good, it was time to add in a few more details, one being a 3D printed air conditioning unit and that drain pipe that we made earlier. Now that the back wall has a good amount of detail, it was time to add a little bit more to the road. So I grabbed out that masking tape again and laid it down in order to make some road lines. Using that same dried up paint that I used on the garage door. This went down nice and rough, giving me that old worn out paint look. After this test went so well, I decided to put a much longer stripe along the middle of the road, repeating the same process of laying out the tape and just hitting a very rough patch with that dried white paint. And the reveal looks awesome. Now to add a little bit more of a dirty effect to the sidewalks and the road, I used an Agrax earth shade, really soaking it into all of these concrete areas and then running it over all of the cracks and breaks in the road, as well as giving the road in general a bit of a random blotch to add the look of grime and dirt that's built up over the years. And since we've got an old dirty broken road, it's time to make an old dirty broken car. I got this toy car from my local Kmart for a few dollars and it's the perfect scale for the miniatures I'll end up using on this build. But it's far too clean, so it's time to work this down to a old, ruined, beat up piece of crap. So I grabbed out some sandpaper and started to rough it up. This took ages, but using the magic of editing, let's skip to the end result. I couldn't quite get all of the white off of it, so I went over this entire thing again in a mithril silver to just help hide all of those metal pieces and blend everything together. I don't mind really that this is going to have a bit of a patchy look as we want it to look old and beat up anyway. I also decided I didn't want it to have a sunroof. I like the idea of a really rusted out roof so I just painted over the entire top in that same silver. Falling back to that same white that I've been using through most of this build, I gave the entire thing a super patchy rough paint job. I know we removed a whole heap of white to start, but I really like the look of this on top of the silver as it looks like it's worn away over time, still leaving a little bit of that faded colour but giving us a nice destroyed aged look. And now for the most important piece of the puzzle, covering it in those rust effects. To start I tried to add in a few heavier areas where I thought the rust would actually have built up. I gathered this from a few reference images that I found online, but very quickly I just realised that it was a much better effect to just dab away with a sponge. This gives a nice random splotchiness to the rust that you can't quite get when you're trying to do it manually. So I went back and forth with the sponge and the brush, adding in details where I wanted it, but ultimately just allowing for the rust effects to give a nice random destroyed look to this entire vehicle. The more I added, the more I liked it. So ultimately, I kind of just kept on going until the entire vehicle was a rusted out wreck. Then coating all of the windows in a fairly thick layer of a crackle medium. The idea behind this was hoping that it would give me a shattered glass effect once it was dried. And while it may have taken me a couple of attempts, it definitely ended up with the look that I was going for with some nice, old, grimy, cracked up windows on our beat up vehicle. My first attempt failed to stick to the glass, but I added a layer of gloss varnish onto the glass first, and then hit it with another layer of the crackle medium, and this all stuck down beautifully, giving us this shattered glass effect. So it was time to test out the fit for this old beat up car on our display, and it worked beautifully. Now I knew what the car would cover up, I could start adding in some more textures. So I grabbed out a mud texture and started to water it down and add it into all of the cracks. Also adding some splotches here and there on the road to help give us that old, dirty, worn out look to the area around the car. 
Now that it was time to add in all of the overgrowth and plant life, I wanted to try something different. So I painted up a heap of different messy greens onto a piece of paper, left this to dry, and then used my leaf shaped hole punch to punch out a whole heap of tiny little leaves that I could use to make an ivy. I then took some polymer wadding that I had spray painted with green and brown spray paints and tore it down to size, thinking I could have this growing up along the edge of my drain pipe. Once I was happy with the size of the piece, I coated it in a heap of Mod Podge and started to pour all of the leaves over the build, pushing them in place and allowing this to dry, leaving me with a perfect section of ivy that I can stick along the side of my wall, giving us a nice overgrown look. But before we glue that in place, it's time to add a whole heap of static grass. So we'll be coming in with that matte Mod Podge again, really giving it a heavy batch everywhere we want the grass, and then using a static grass applicator to stick all of the grass down, but making sure that it stays pointed upright and looks nice and natural. We really want this to look wild, so I'm gonna use a few different types of static grass, as well as some flockings, so we get a whole heap of variation in these different areas of growth. And now it's time to start gluing everything in place. So with a little bit of super glue, we'll stick the car down exactly where we want it, and then start bringing in a heap of different grass tufts of varying lengths. By using a heap of different types here, we're really gonna bring a natural wild look to these weeds, as well as helping to blend the car into the natural environment by making it look like these things have caught around the wheels of the car and built up some dirt and weeds over the years. Then coming back in and super gluing that ivy in place against the back wall. While I was here, I also decided to add in a little bit of a moss growth really coming up the back of that concrete just to help this whole area look even more old and overrun. And now for the miniatures that inspired the entire build. These come from Skullforge Studios, who normally do a really high quality collection of Star Wars related miniatures, of which I already own a Mandalorian. But this month on their Patreon, they released a whole heap of infected and other miniatures from The Last of Us. And seeing that I had all of these to work with was what kicked me off on this build to start with. So I printed out a handful of the infected, primed them up, gave them a Xenothol highlight with a Wraithbone white, and then got to painting them with a handful of different Citadel contrast colours. After I'd finished painting them and given them a few extra details, I started to glue them all in place on my build. This running girl was a little bit difficult, so I had to use a paint pot to hold her in place as the glue dried to her foot. But the rest of these models balanced nice and easy, so they were simple to glue down. And now that all of our zombies were in place, it's time to glue down Pedro and his adopted child. I may have the wrong franchise. I decided to throw in one extra zombie crawling his way out from underneath the car as a little bit of an extra detail. I was almost ready to call it done, but realized I still hadn't added in my signature tiny little mushrooms and one of those little frogs. Finally, we put the finished build in its frame and there we have the diorama for the crossover that we didn't know we needed. Daddy Pedro saving the day for his adopted child from whatever the universe has to throw at him. This build was so much fun and I got to explore a few different methods that I haven't used in the past. Making some cracked up destroyed roads and giving these shattered effects onto the glass, as well as a couple of new methods for making overgrowth with this awesome ivy. And this build wouldn't have been possible without the minis from Skullforge Studios. This video isn't sponsored, I'm just a really big fan. So check out their Patreon or their Gumroad shops if you guys want to have any of these models in your own collection. I'd love to do some more awesome crossover builds in the future, so if there's any cool pop culture crossovers you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see some more apocalyptic style builds, check out this video here, and until next time, never stop making stuff.